أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The surah we have reached is known as surah Al-Mu'min What a unique name of the surah At the beginning of the surah Allah Tabarakullah shows what is the shan of Iman Meaning if you can become Al-Mu'min In the surahs before this year it was about shukr Make a lot of shukr of what Allah Tabarakullah has given and you will see more Make shukar of dunya and you will get better. Make shukar of deen, you will get better. And then also the message was shown that if there is no shukar for dunya, then that very dunya becomes your destruction. The people of Saba put up that wall. They never made shukar of life. That wall destroyed them all. And thereafter there is shukar of deen. In Surah Al-Mu'min, the beginning page shows if you can be a mu'min, then what you will get. And then the remaining pages shows now what is a mu'min. Normally mu'min, iman means that to believe. That is, but this surah is not going to show iman, it's going to show the demand of iman. But before coming to the demand, because the demand is something that's demanded, difficult. Almighty Allah's system is that before putting the difficult path, He shows what you're going to get out of. When a person hears that, then immediately he says, I also want to be a mu'min, like the mu'min that is demanded in the surah. Allah Tabarukta starts the surah speaking about الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ arsh That they are those angels which carry the arsh of Almighty Allah. Now you'll understand from all the angels, the closest to what we will call the greatest jelly of Almighty Allah is the four angels. Because they are carrying that arsh. And it is from the arsh that every decision that's happening in the world is passing. So if you're really looking for context, then those four angels are like the best context. الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ arsh. Then وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ They are those angels around them. يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ They are continuously in the tasbih of Allah and they iman on Allah, obviously, is called yu'minun. They are on the highest level of believing in the power. They carrying that arsh. Four of them. On the day of Tiyama, so much of the jelly will fall on that arsh that eight angels will be then called to hold it. That four will not be sufficient. But four is carrying it always in the tasbih. Now, what is their level of iman? What is their level? Normally, if you call a man, he's strong. And somebody else comes in front and he's weak, small. And someone says, he is also strong. This strong man will look at him like with, what you've been strong like. So imagine their level of iman. They're in, under the arsh. Every decision of power, they're the ones witnessing it like to the highest level. And their nazar then falls onto me and you. Because, وَيُؤْمِنُونَ bi With full iman on Allah, and they are told, now look at the people who got Iman on Allah. That's me and you now. So normally what have happened is, if they look, then you say, you don't call that Iman. But Almighty Allah made it such, that He put the honor of the people of this Ummah in their hearts. Otherwise there will be no honor. He put such honor in the hearts, or whatever you call of the angel. وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا that when they look at the condition of the people of Iman, obviously in our condition is not the best of conditions. But instead of showing anger, they immediately together with their tasbih and their Iman on Allah, they fall into an ibadat which is called istighfar on our behalf. وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا After istighfar, the fourth amal of this becomes dua for us. So two was theirs and two was ours. Two was theirs which was be their tasbih on their iman on Allah which was unique. Then they looked at me and you. Just because of the quality of iman, they fell into istighfar for me and you and dua. Look at the dua. Normally you'll meet any person who say, make this dua for me. They made it all. Rabbana wasi'ata kulla shay'in rahmata wa ilma. O oh Allah, you encompass everything with mercy and knowledge. فَغْفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ tabu. So please Allah, forgive the people who turn towards you. وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكُ Who try to walk on your path. وَقِهِمْ عَذَابُ الْجَحِيمُ 
Please Allah save them from the fire. Rabbana wa adkhilhum jannati adn. O oh Allah, enter them all into gardens which will never come to an end. Allati wa'attahum, those gardens which you promised them. Wa man salaha min abaihim, wa azwajihim, wa zurriyatihim. O Allah, give it to them and give it to their parents, give it to their spouses, give it to their children. Innaka anta al-azizul hakim. Waqihimu al-sayyat. O oh Allah, from difficulties, problems, bad things, O oh Allah, save them all. وَمَنْ تَقِ السَّيِّعَاتِ يَوْمَئِذٍ فَقَدْ رَحِمْتَ Because this is that mercy, O oh Allah, that you show, the one who you save from difficulties. وَذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ The difficulty on the day of Qiyamah is the biggest. The one who you save that day, that is the greatest mercy, that is the greatest success. Now how much of dua how much of istighfar in the highest contact? On what, con- on what was the seer? It was called on the quality of iman. Now everyone will say that. Now I'm happy to be a believer. Because I never knew my contact is so high. Now Allah Taala will say, now I will show you the demand of iman. And can we live up to it? May Allah Taala make it. That if we can get it, what this believer, the surah was called surah al-mu'min. Because in the surah Allah Tawarukullah speaks about waqala rajulun mu'min. In the time of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, after he stood up against Fir'aun, Fir'aun had killed many of the Bani Israel. For him killing was no issue. But he was not ready to take that step towards Musa alayhi salam. So he's looking for support now. So he calls the people of his court and he says, what are we going to do like? But he knows what he has to do. But he wants one of them to say, let's kill him. And then he can say, right, right, very good, go kill him. To put it on somebody else and say, he said in the ending, not me. So the people are gathered. So now everyone has to speak and say, do something. In that gathering, it is not clear who this believer was. Some say he was the nephew of Pharaoh. Some say most likely he was the next in line. Because of that, he was not someone small in the squad. He was someone of strength. He was someone who, if he spoke also, he knew that they won't just jump and start killing me. But he was not ready to show his iman. وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِّنْ آلِ فِرْعُونَ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهُ From the family of Fir'aun, there was this individual who was hiding his iman. But the demand of iman was to still speak. The demand of Iman, of an individual who hid his Iman, was when the time comes to speak, he spoke. We are living in a time where because we are surrounded by what is called a bigger Fir'aun. A bigger Fir'aun means in our own small country and on the bigger scale of the world, we call them the superior power. They are nothing but a Fir'aun. Sometimes they talk in a very nice manner, like how Fir'aun spoke to the people. He said, I looked and I thought about this. And I can't find a God for you people better than me. He spoke very nice. And sometimes he spoke in a very rough manner. That day you don't do what I want you. We live also under a fear. But the demand of Iman was that sometimes you'll have to speak out. And speak out in a manner that's not so loud. But your message is heard. He spoke out in the court of Fir'aun. Listen to his message. He never directly said, I believe in Musa Ali salam. He said, even if I don't believe, because he wasn't going to say, I believe. But he was ready to speak. Let, let's say it's like this. Let's say it's like this. But let's question. Like We're going through a phase. There are some people who say, can we question this thing? The other people say, don't talk. Can it be questioned? Because this is not the end. This fitna which we are seeing is a beginning of a very big fitna. Lies are not going to stop. Lies are going to get bigger. When every new lie is going to be said by the entire media of the world, is every time the people of Iman going to say, shh, don't talk. Or can we have the demand of Iman to say, this must be questioned. He questioned. He said, أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُّلًا أَيْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ 
He says, why are you thinking of killing a man just because of one sentence? All he is saying is, my Rabbi is Allah. And he brought us proof in the beginning. And we could not answer him. He says, if he's a liar, then the results of his lies will fall on him. But let's say he's speaking the truth. يُسِبُكُمْ بَعْدُ الَّذِي يَعِدُكُمْ Then remember that some of those things he's warned you of is going to hit us. Me and you can also question that okay, let's say this is the truth. So if this is the truth, then okay, everyone won't die perhaps. But let's say there's a lie in this. If there's a lie and everyone who's supposed to be going closer to deen is taken further away from deen. If it's a lie, then are we not in a major problem? So loudly he never say it, but the demand is it can be looked at. Can we question? He said, يَا قَوْمِ لَكُمُ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمَ ظَاهِرِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ He says, today, oh my people, you are the kings on this land. And that's why you're upset. Why is he coming now? With the new story. فَمَنْ يَنْصُرُنَا مِنْ بَأْسِ اللَّهِ but if the punishment of Allah has to come, then who's going to help us? Perhaps He spoke for me and you also. That, oh my nation, perhaps you are comfortable today in your houses. Say, as long as I don't go out, I'm okay. Says, but what if the punishment of Allah comes on us for not going out? Then who's going to say, in my house I'm getting punished? So in a very unique manner, the demand of Iman was to speak, what if? And it's possible it's like this, but what if it's the other? He said, وَقَالَ الَّذِي آمَنَ يَا قَوْمِ He said, oh my people, I am so worried. أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِثْلَ يَوْمِ الْأَحْزَابِ مِثْلَ دَأْبِ قَوْمِ نُوح وَعَاد وَثَمُود وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ That there were many people in the past who did everything to protect themselves and it never worked. He said, I fear for you. There was the nation of Nuh in a place where there was no water, water took them. There was the people of Ad and Thamud, each one saw what the previous one was destroyed. They said water destroyed them, so the second one built their houses in the high mountains. Water does not reach those high mountains. When the punishment of Allah came, it was not dependent on water. In the, high, the mountains remained, the houses remained, the people did not remain. They saw heavy winds came and it blew them because they were in that condition. They said, we will build our houses in a manner that the major winds won't get us when the punishment of Allah had to come one scream was sufficient. He says, Ya qawmi inni akhafu alaykum yawm tanad And he says, even in this world, if that punishment doesn't grab me and you in our house, he said, I still fear for you. There's a day going to come when everyone is going to be screaming for help to the other. That day is coming. يَوْمَ تُوَلُّونَ mudbirin. On that day everyone will turn away from the other. مَا لَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ عَاصِمْ There will be no one to help anyone but Allah. In this world, if man is not ready to say, Oh Allah, you are my only help. And if he looks for everything else to aid him but Allah, then what this man of Iman said, I fear, what if the punishment of Allah comes where you are? Then where do you run? And then in great detail then he continued. He said to them, think about it. وَقَالَ الَّذِي آمَنَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُونِ He said, oh my nation, follow my way of thinking. I will put you on a cause which makes sense. Still he's not saying I'm a believer. But he's saying, don't just make your decisions. He said, إِنَّمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا مَتَاعَ Remember, this world is only a few days of taking some benefit. وَإِنَّ الْآخِرَةَ هِيَ دَارُ الْقَرَارِ Another world is coming. It's a world where I'm going to stay and you're going to stay. If our decision was right, then even if it meant death in this world, it's going to give us a world of enjoyment. If our decision was wrong, death in this world is going to come still. But it's going to take us to another world where it's not going to be easy. مَنْ عَمِلَ سَيِّئَةً فَلَا يُجْزَى إِلَّا مِثْلَهَا If the action was bad, 
you are going to get no reward except what you had done. وَمَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِّنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ And whoever has done good with iman, فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ For him there is a paradise. يُرْزَقُونَ فِيهَا بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ As he was speaking, he was speaking. Obviously they got the understanding that he is inclined to Musa a.s. He was making it too clear now. At the ending, he said, فَسَتَذْكُرُونَ مَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ He says, one day you will remember what I have said to you. وَأُفَوِّدُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ I now hand my matter to Allah. Because normally when a man now pushes too much, then they say, just keep quiet now, over. So he says, the day will come where you will remember. Allah Tabarakallah then says, فَوَقَاهُ اللَّهُ سَيِّعَاتِ مَا مَكَرُوا وَحَاقَ بِآلِ فِرْعُونَ سُوءُ الْعَذَابِ Although he was in the court of Fir'aun, but because he was ready to speak out, the court of Fir'aun also was not going to harm him. So Fir'aun and his people, they made the decision. Finally the decision was, we will attack. And they went for Nabi Musa a.s. with the Bani Israel. Mufassirin say, most likely this man, he made some excuse and he pulled back. He couldn't join them. So as the army of Fir'aun went and they saw the water opening and they went into the water, he was going to be saved in this world also, he was not going to be drowned in that water. Some say perhaps he returned and he was like a king after that because kingship was supposed to go to him. Whatever happened to him, Quran made it very clear that the plots of Fir'aun, Allah Tabarukla says, we saved him from the evil plots. He was not going to fall in it. And a terrible punishment surrounded the family of Fir'aun but what kept him out of that family? He could have been the nephew. He could have been the next in line. He had one thing which is called Iman. Although he was hiding his Iman. But he spoke according to the demand of that Iman. Me and you today, we have not hidden our Iman. By the fadl of Allah, because we never needed to. We showed our Iman. So my kurta is showing the Iman. My topi is showing my Iman. One thing we are missing, however, is according to the demand of Iman, sometimes we are not talking. But sometimes we are not talking. If we can just say that, oh my nation, maybe, but maybe also. If I'm right, what can happen? If I'm wrong, what can happen? If we do not start questioning the Fir'auns above us, then when that entire Fir'aun and his army goes into the water, we will go with them also. But the one who questions, Allah Tabarakallah will make it that he will pull back. And when everyone drowns, he will be saved. The demand of Iman is to speak the talk of the people of Iman. And if you can do that, then the dua of the angels by the arsh of Almighty Allah will immediately fall on the people of Iman. Allah Tabarakallah make us from the people of Iman. Allah Tabarakallah let us speak according to the demands of Iman. We are not sent into this world to cause fitna and cause corruption. Sometimes, however, man will say something that others will become so upset that the man himself will say, okay, one day you'll remember what I'm saying. Now I'll just keep quiet now. But there is a, that only happens when, when man first says something and others then say, hey, keep quiet, overdoing it. You say, I told you already. And now I'll tell somebody else. What will happen when man will tell? It is not necessary that everyone will listen. But the man speaking, he will become convinced on his words. He will become convinced. The demand of Iman is to speak the talk of Iman. Allah Tabarakallah bless us all with the ability to speak what is the truth in the right manner, in the wisest of manners, in the correct time, in the correct place. Wa akhiru da'wana. Anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.